Welcome to this tutorial on how you can get started automating your Google Sheets with Zapier. In this video, we'll show you step-by-step -step how you can pull data from Google Sheets and send it to your other applications. We're gonna use an example automations with Google Sheets and Slack, and then a second automation where we'll show you how you can capture data from other apps and save it in Google Sheets. And for this, we'll be capturing email data coming from Gmail and storing it in a Google Sheet. My name is Jan, I'm one of the co-founders at 9X. At 9X, we train business professionals and show them how they can leverage AI and automation using no-code tools like Zapier so they can automate their processes and build digital solutions. Now with the intro out of the way, let's get on to the tutorial. So for our first automation, what we're gonna do is use this marketing campaign tracking Google Sheet and we're going to set up an automated Slack notification via Zapier so that whenever any of our campaigns in this sheet move to the planning phase, that we can send a Slack notification to our marketing team so the team know they can get started and start preparing the campaign. So to do that, we'll head over to Zapier and create a new Zap. And the first thing I'm always recommend giving your Zap a good name. So let me go with Google Sheets to Slack marketing campaign alert. All right, so that's my Zap nicely named and I'm going to start with setting up a trigger. And here we can select from the different apps. In our case, the trigger is gonna start when that Google Sheet row changes. So I'm gonna select Google Sheets. And the what we can do now is select from the list of different trigger events. So you could um, trigger a Zap whenever there's a brand new worksheet, whenever a new spreadsheet is created, whenever there's a new row. In our case, we're gonna use one of these first two triggers, which is whenever there's a new or updated spreadsheet row. Because remember, we wanna make sure it's only when a status gets changed to planning. We don't want when a new campaign enters the spreadsheet, it's only when one moves to the planning status. And in my case, I'm using a um, Google Team Drive. So I'm gonna select this uh, second option. If you're just using a personal Gmail, you could definitely go ahead and use the first one. So I'm gonna say new or updated spreadsheet row team drive. And now what I need to do is connect my Google account. So I'm just going to click on sign in. And this will now take us to the um, authentication page where I can select which Google account I want to connect to Zapier. So I'm going to just select mine. And now we need to grant Zapier some permissions. So I'm going to hit allow. And that's it. Our Google Sheets account is now connected in Zapier. So I can continue and configure this trigger. What we need to do is select which spreadsheet that we want to uh, be listening to. If we go back to our spreadsheet, I'm just gonna grab the name campaign tracker. And back in Zapier, I can actually like search for this one. We even saw it was the first one on the list anyway, but this is my campaign tracker sheet. And now we need to select which tab of the sheet are we listening to? So that's what's known as the worksheet. In our case, there is only one tab. So that's gonna be sheet one. And lastly, we can select which column do we want to listen to. If we leave this as any column, that means whenever any of the columns change, so let's say someone's entering a new campaign name, that would trigger this app. This is not what we want. We only want this app to run specifically when the status changes. So when column E changes, that's when we want this zap to run. I can hit continue and test this trigger. Now what Zap is going to do is actually going to pull in already some data from that Google Sheet. So we can use this as a reference while we build out this zap. So let me check here, for instance, in row C, and we can see it's pulled in three sort of random rows from my spreadsheet. All of these are in the um, idea phase. So let me make a quick change to the spreadsheet and I wanna see if I can pull in a row where the status is planning. So I'm just gonna update this Cyber Monday sale campaign and set it to planning. And now head back to Zapier. And here what I can do is select find new records. And we can see now successfully that we've pulled in a new spreadsheet row and that is the Cyber Monday sale and the status is set to planning. So I'm gonna continue with the selected record. And now what we can do is set up the first action in our Zap. And you may think that this should already be a Slack notification, but before we do that, we actually need to set up a filter, which is a tool provided by Zapier and what we can set up here is that we only want to continue if this status exactly matches. So it's a text filter planning. And we need to make sure this is written the exact same way as it is in our spreadsheet. And what this is gonna ensure is because there may be other changes in the spreadsheet, for instance, a 
planning campaign might move to live and a live campaign might move to completed. We only want this zap to proceed if the status is planning. So let me continue this one. And you'll see here, it's already telling us from that test row that we selected, that one would match the filter and continue down the zap. What we can do to really test this out is I'm gonna go back to my Google Sheet and click on test and grab one of those other rows where we know the status is idea and say, hey, like, let's continue testing with this record. And if we retest this filter, you can see now the idea, this would not have passed the filter and the zap would stop here. So our filter is set up correctly. We can move on. And now I can drop in my Slack notification. And again, what we need to do is select what action um, do we want to uh, do. In our case, what we want to do is send a message. We've got a few different options here. We can send a direct message, so that's to a single person, and then either a channel message, which is a public channel in Slack, or a private channel. In my case, because I want to send this to the whole marketing team, I'm going to use send channel message. And again, just like we did with Google Sheets, I need to connect to my Slack account so that Zapier can have the permissions to send this message. So I'm just gonna click sign in. And now we land, similar to the Google setup, we land on a page where we need to give Zapier permission to perform some actions in our Slack account. I'm just gonna hit allow. And just like that, our Slack is connected and you can see it's connected to my Slack user. So now we can go ahead and configure this message. The first thing I need to do is select what channel the message should be sent to. So in my case, I've got one for marketing campaigns. So that is the channel that our marketing team's gonna be in and there they'll be alerted for the new campaign. And here we can just write the message text. So maybe we do something like a new campaign is ready to be planned. And we're gonna drop in the campaign name. And what's um, cool here, so in Zapier, we can either hit this plus button or do a little forward slash. And here we have access to any of the data that's basically available in previous steps of our Zap. So I'm gonna go into my Google Sheets and here we can pull in that dynamic data from my Google Sheet and include this in the Slack message. So I'm gonna drop in the campaign name here because that's gonna be the, um, that the team knows what campaign is ready to be planned. And maybe I also drop in the start date and I'll give a little bit of context here. I'll say planned start date and drop in the campaign start date. And maybe we can finish this off with a little motivational message. Let's get cracking and make this campaign success. Awesome. What we can also do is like make our message a little bit prettier here. I'm gonna um, use what are known as markdown and by putting these asterisks around the campaign name, this is gonna basically make that bold so it stands out a little bit better. And just to get the team a little bit excited, I'm even gonna drop in an emoji here of a megaphone. Um, and so right now it's basically saying campaign name and giving an example from that test row. What's gonna happen when this message actually sends, it's only gonna be the dynamic data from our Google Sheet. Now we have a few different options we can set up here um, in our Slack message. So we can choose whether we wanna send this as a bot. What this means is if you change this to no, whichever user you've used to authenticate, so in this case, it's my Slack account, that would be the person sending this message. So for automations, I would always recommend keeping this as a bot. What's great then is we can give our bot a name. So I might call this one the marketing campaign assistant. And we could um, also provide an image. In this case, I'm gonna keep it simple and not do that. This will just be the Zapier logo, but you can definitely customize this. Then we have the option to include a link to this zap. You'll see what that looks like in a second. This is very useful, especially if you set up a lot of these Slack notifications. If for whatever reason, a notification might not be working as you expected, or it needs to be changed or even uh, paused, by having this link to the zap in the message, it makes it very easier. Like imagine you start seeing a lot of uh, annoying messages and you wanna maybe update or modify one of your zaps. You'll just be able to click that link, it'll take you straight to the zap and you can do those modifications. And we have some um, extra options here, which we're just going to leave blank for this case. I can hit continue and do my first test. And it looks like the message has been successfully sent. Let me go over to Slack and check it out. And here we see our message, a new campaign is ready to be planned New Year's resolution offer, plan start date, 
uh, 6th of January, 2025. Let's get cracking and make this campaign a success. So that's looking great. And here, as I mentioned, is that link to the Zap where we can just click on this and make any changes we need. Right now, we've obviously tested our full solution. Now what we need to do is publish our Zap and turn this on. So let me publish here. So our Zap is now on, it's been published. So it's ready to test out in production. The way this one's gonna work, we can see at the top here, this one has what is known as a polling trigger, which means based on the time shown here, um, every, in this case, every two minutes, it's gonna go and check that Google Sheet and see if there were any changes to that status column. We can easily update this if we like by just clicking on update frequency. That opens up the settings here and we could change this if we didn't want it to check so often. In this case, I actually like that it's checking quite quickly so that our marketing team is alerted as soon as possible to this new campaign being planned. Um, again, what's great here is if this uh, Zap runs and it does not find any new sheets, you won't be basically charged any tasks. It's gonna just check for free. Same with the filter, that is a free task. You're only gonna be using one of your Zapier tasks if a Slack message is sent. So let me now go back into my spreadsheet and make a change. I've actually already updated this. We've like fast forwarded into the future now. We're ready for Christmas. So let me move this 12 days of Christmas to planning. And if I head back over to Zapier, I could either wait for two minutes or what I can just do is hit run. And we can see now that this was triggered on one new spreadsheet row. Let me go over to my Slack message and beautiful, there we can see that the 12 days of Christmas campaign is ready to be planned. There's the start date and let's get cracking. And in Zapier, we can go to our Zap run history and refresh and there we see that that successful task was run. So for our second workflow, we're gonna be getting data from another app, in our case, Gmail, and storing that into a Google Sheet. And what we'll be building is an invoice logger. So I've already set my Google Sheet up here. And what I wanna build is that whenever I receive an email which contains an invoice, I'm going to be logging this into this spreadsheet. This will help me, for instance, at the end of the month and I see all of my invoices that I've received and I could forward this onto my finance team or onto my uh, accountant and I have all my invoices in one place. So setting this up in Zapier, I'm first gonna start with selecting my trigger. And what I'm gonna do is use Gmail from the list of apps. I'm going to select the trigger event. So we have a few different options here. We can just trigger this whenever we have a new email received. But in my case, I'm gonna be using this one, a new email matching search. Triggers when you receive a new email that matches a search string you provide. I'll set that one up. What I need to do is connect my Gmail account. So hit sign in, select my account from my list of Google accounts and continue and then give Zapier permission to read my emails. And that's it, looking very good. Our Gmail is now connected. I can go on to configure this action. So the search keywords we're gonna use is just invoice and I can hit continue and we can basically test this trigger. So what this is doing now, it should basically pull in maybe some of my last emails that contained the term invoice. And there we go, this has found some last emails. Let's check this one out. This looks like it's an, the last invoice we got from Loom, so that looks good. Let me continue with this selected record. And all we're gonna do now is drop in the Google Sheets action. And we can select our action, and that's going to be create a spreadsheet row. So every new email that comes in that contains invoice, I wanna create a new row in that spreadsheet. And um, my Google Sheet's already connected, I can hit continue. And now I need to find that spreadsheet. So that was called the invoice logger, there we go. And again, this has only got one tab, so I can just select sheet one. And now it's automatically picked up all those columns in my spreadsheet. So very cool, I can just now freely go and map these out. So for the subject, I'm gonna to go to my, um, from my email trigger and grab the subject line. The from, I'm just gonna go and get the from name. So in that demo it was Loom. The from email, the date at which I received this. And this one's very cool. I'm dropping in a link to the email and you'll see why that's useful in a second. So if we go down, we have here message URL. And lastly, I've got a status. So if I head back over to my spreadsheet, here I've set this up that the status is either new or processed. So whenever Zapier finds a new email containing invoice, I want this to be set as new. 
And then maybe after I've forwarded this onto the finance or the accounting team, I can mark this as processed and then keep a very clean record of my invoices. So back in Zapier, now I can just hard code this. I'm not gonna map this field. I just want the status to always be new whenever it finds a new invoice. Let me hit continue. And now I can test this step. And perfect, that looks like it has created a new row here. Let me go and check that out in my spreadsheet. There we have it. So this invoice has been perfectly logged. I can actually open up this link and here we see it's gonna take me directly to that email where I can download the invoice, forward it. Um, really, really cool. So my zap is all good to go. I'm gonna publish this one. And perfect, my zap is now published. From now on, any uh, invoice I receive to my email will be logged in my spreadsheet. You could really think about building this one out even further. This was a very simple demonstration that I wanted to show you. You could think about even adding in an AI step to maybe extract the value and when the payment is due by, you can really uh, get creative with this. Now, if you're still here, congratulations, you made it to the end of the tutorial. I hope you're excited about automating your Google Sheets. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like the video and also subscribe to the Zapier channel. They're gonna be releasing plenty more AI and automation tutorials to help you on your journey. And until next time, happy zapping.